In this video, I'm going to talk about how to use command line arguments in C. So command line arguments are these kinds of things. If I say dot slash D, and then I say like error nine, error and nine, we would call those command line arguments. They're arguments we're giving to this program here to maybe tell it what to do, to tell it, you know, to print out the first nine errors maybe, or something like that. Now we can detect these and use them in C. And we do that by having some extra parameters in our main function here. So I'm going to say here int arg C, then I'm going to say car star arg V open bracket, close bracket. And what we've got here is basically an array of strings. And these are going to be the arguments themselves. And then arg C is going to be the number of arguments that we get. So we can do a printf of arg C to see what we get first. So we'll say printf arg C and we'll just print it out and just see what we get. So do a compilation here and then we'll run our program with say one, two, three, and we get argc four. So we might think it should be three because we have like one, two, three arguments here. So why do we get four here? So we get four because the program itself is considered an argument and we could use that to read in the actual program name itself. So if we said here like print F and we said argv zero is equal to percent S and then we printed out argv zero, we're going to find that that's the actual name of the program itself. So we can do a recompilation, run it again, and we get that argv zero is dot slash D. And so we could then print out the next arguments as well. I could say print F and we'll do like one, two, three, and we'll print off the, the next arguments as well. So we'll say here, one, two, three, and do a recompilation and run it again. And we get now, you know, one, two, three as our arguments here. So this is how we could read in arguments and we could do all kinds of stuff. I mean, we could throw this into a loop as well, of course, and just have a loop going from I being zero up until arg C. And we could do a print F of each argument this way too. And this would be also another way of printing out the arguments. And this would be, you know, fine as well. We'll say here arg V I, and we're going to print out I each time. And we're just going to do the same thing we did before, just accomplish a bit differently using a loop that's going to go from zero incrementing by one up until but not including arg C. And we're going to print out each argument using a loop like this. So we could programmatically handle the amount of arguments we have if they're some different number of arguments by using things like loops and using arg C as, you know, the, the number of arguments that we've got and just kind of programmatically handle a different number of arguments, for example. So if I do a recompilation here and then run it again with one, two, three here, I'm going to get again, you know, arg zero is D, arg one is one, arg two is two, arg three is three, and, and so on. And the idea is that I could then increase it to four and this code is still going to work because I'm handling the arguments in some programmatic way based on the number of arguments I'm given instead of hard coding in exactly which arguments to print out. Now, the arguments are strings. We could always convert them to an int if that's we, something we want to work with. So we could include stdlib.h here. And what we could do is we could maybe convert some arguments here. So I could say expect that I'm going to have two arguments in my function here. I'm just going to comment out some of this stuff here. And I'm going to say that I'm going to expect two arguments and I'm going to actually convert them to integers. And I'm going to say int lower is equal to a2oi, this is gonna to convert to an integer, and we're gonna convert argv1 to an integer, and we're gonna say int higher is equal to a2oi argv2. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a loop that's gonna go from lower up until higher, and we're gonna output the numbers from the lower value up until the higher value. And it's just a simple kind of configurable program this way where I could say like, output each number from the lower number to the higher number, one after the other. So I'll clear this here. We'll do a recompilation here and we'll run it and we'll say here like two to five and we get two, three, four, five printed out. And I could say like nine to 12 and we get nine, 10, 11, 12. I could say like one to 12 and I get one to 12 printed out. And what's going on here is we're taking the first two arguments, and I mean like the real arguments, not the name of the program itself. And we're gonna take those arguments, we're gonna convert them to an integer with this function here from the standard library here. And we're gonna store one as lower, store one as higher as integers, and then we're gonna use them as integers and go from the lower value up until the higher value, printing out the number each time on a new line. And so this is one example of, you know, a bit of a configurable 
program here where the program's behavior is dependent on these arguments here. And it's a simple case, but this is the kind of thing we might do. We might convert some you know, arg argument from the command line to an integer and then use it to modify how our program behaves. Now, one thing with this program here is that I'm hard coding it to expect exactly two arguments. And if those two arguments weren't there, I mean, we might have a, we might have a problem here. Let's just see what happens. I'm going to say dot slash D and I'm going to say five, I'm going to say four and I'm going to say just nothing for the second argument. And I get segmentation fault. So we got a problem here. If we don't have the right number of arguments, we're not going to get good program behavior, right? So one thing we might want to do is have a bit of a check. We might, we might want to say like, if arg C does not equal three, then we could say something like print F and we could say, you know, two arguments required. So we'll say two args required. And then we'll say exit and we'll exit with negative one. And if I were to clear this here, compile it here and then run it, I provide two arguments like two and eight, we're fine. But if I provide less than two, we're not okay. If I provide more than two, we're not okay. And it says two arguments required. It's basically giving the user some feedback on that and letting them know they have to provide two arguments. We might, we might, we might want to tell them exactly what arguments they need to put in as well, like two integers and Y and things like that. But this is an example of how to use these command line arguments in C. And hopefully this has been helpful to you. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.